Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I own the Water Filter eStore and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about how to change the lamp, clean the sleeve, and replace the filters in a Viqua IHS 12 D4 Mini Rack Ultraviolet System. The procedure is exactly the same for the IHS 22 D4 and the IHS 22 E4. So just follow along. Before you start, you always have to make sure you have a replacement lamp, to the two replacement filters. I always like to have a spare sleeve available too because the sleeves are very fragile and in case your old sleeve is so dirty that it can't be cleaned, you'd need to replace it anyway. Some of the other things you're going to need to have on hand is a bucket, uh, the wrench to remove the filter housings, um, some cloths, um, you're going to need CLR or a similar type product or vinegar to clean the quartz sleeve. You're also going to need a screwdriver to remove the plug from the bottom of the filter housings. So we're going to start by shutting off the flow of water. So there should be a ball valve somewhere or some kind of a shut off valve um, from the inlet side. So we're going to turn that off. And, um, and then there's also an outlet side. Now before the, you shut off the water from the outlet side, I like to go around in the house and open up a faucet, a laundry sink, or any kind of faucet that's nearby. Let the water run till it slows down to a trickle. And then I close the outlet valve. Once you've done that, then let's look at uh, the, the um, change in the UV lamp. So we can disconnect the power to the UV, either at uh, wherever it's plugged in or you can just unplug it from the side here and uh, and then you need to let it set for 10 minutes to cool. Once the lamp is cooled then you can undo the clips on either side and remove the connection here to the power set that aside and then you're going to hold this, the bolt uh, that's the gray part and unscrew the lamp from inside now, as you can tell, I'm wearing gloves here, and the reason I am is because you can't touch the quartz sleeve um, that's inside here or the UV lamp. Um, so if, if you're not wearing gloves, you can only handle it by the very end or use a cloth. So then you would unscrew the, the bolt. Once you've unscrewed the bolt, you can set that aside, and then you can pull out the quartz sleeve. So this quartz sleeve is brand new for just uh, for this video, but, uh, but what you would do now, you'd clean this quartz sleeve with CLR or a similar type product, and this has to become perfectly clean. Um, if it's not perfectly clean, it's going to definitely compromise the performance of the UV. So if you can't get it perfectly clean, replace it with a brand new one. And then when you slide it back in here, make sure you slide it in here perfectly straight. And you'll see there's a spring at the bottom. So you can see the O-ring's already on here. And then you take this gray bolt and you put it back on top, thread it in. Now you only want to make this hand tight, like that. All right, once that's in there, then we would put the new lamp in. And when you tighten the new lamp, you'll notice that it only goes so far and then stops. That's tight enough. So once you've put that on there, then this uh, connection goes back on. So you can see there's a movable ring around the outside that locates the, um, the jumper. So line that up with the lamp and slide it all the way down. You'll hear a click on both sides. Once you've completed that, then we can plug it back in and put it back into service. Here's our plug. and then it starts the startup procedure. So uh, once it starts, uh, you've reapplied the power, it's gonna go through the startup. Now it likely won't show 365, this is a brand new unit, but you'll, it'll have counted down to 10 days or 12 days or something like that. Once it gets to this stage, then you would push this first button on the left here, sorry, on the right, uh, the left button between the two, you'd push that and that would reset this to 365. So now it's going through its startup procedure um, and uh, once this uh, button, uh, once this LED stops flashing, the green one, then it will be 100% back to be ready to be back in service. Just push the button on the top of each filter housing um, for a, a few seconds just to release any pressure that's inside there before unscrewing the filter housings themselves. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to drain, remove the drain plug from the bottom of these filter housings. 
So I have a, a one here, and you can see here's the plug here. It's kind of hard to show on the one, but so you just take a screwdriver on the bottom and unscrew, undo the screw at the bottom to uh, drain the water out of that filter housing, out of both of them. Makes them a lot easier to handle. Then we'd, you would use the wrench that comes with the unit to unscrew the filter housing. You unscrew this ring, being careful to, uh, to catch this unit as it comes down. You would then replace the filter inside, put it back up, and then screw it back up. Obviously, you're gonna make sure that you put the plug back in the bottom of the uh, filter housing before you proceed. Once you've got the new filters back installed, everything's tightened up. Again, you'd use the wrench. You don't have to really reef it tight. Just, just make it a little bit more than hand tight. That's good enough. And then once you've completed that, then you'd open up the inlet side, and again, you'd open that, wouldn't open it up all the way, you'd open it up partially, let the unit fill up, and make sure you check for leaks. As long as there's no leaks, then you can open it up all the way, and you can also open up the outlet. Then I would go to the nearest um, faucet, a large flow faucet, like a bathtub or a laundry sink, somewhere that doesn't have an aerator screen on it, let the water run, and that would purge any carbon fines that might come from the carbon filter or any other debris that might have been introduced during the whole process. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of all the new videos that become available in the future. If you'd like some more information, you can go to our website, either the thewaterstoremidland.com or the waterfilteresstore.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.